the theme of this is community. I mean, looking out on this crowd, uh, you know, I see Teachers College. Uh, I think it's important that we are a community, that we have faculty, we have students, we have staff, alumni who are here. Uh, and I'm, of course, I love it that there's standing room only. So that's a great <laughs> part of it. So. So anyway, thank you and, uh, uh, for being here. Uh, you put a lot of pressure on me because you come to hear what we're doing, so I'll do the best I can. But I want to start my remarks with an acknowledgement of the war in Israel and Gaza, which is a source of intense grief and emotion ever present over the last six weeks. Our hearts go out to all of the innocent Palestinians, Israelis, and indeed many others who have been or will be killed injured and devastated by this conflict. And of course, to those of you who are both directly and indirectly affected by this war. I know the pain and fear we all feel as this rages on. Let me say here that Teachers College unequivocally rejects all forms of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, hate crimes of any groups, even as we are aware that there are on the, that they are on the rise for Israelis, Palestinians, Jews, and Muslims. Now, we can't control what happens in the world, but we can continue to make sure that our own campus is safe, welcoming, inclusive, and collaborative, even when we disagree. This is our priority. This is how we live our values. Now, to provide support for our community, we have assembled a crisis response team in constant touch here, as well as with Columbia and Barnard. We are providing a variety of university resources in case you experience or observe any incidents of bias or doxing. These resources are accessible in several different places on our website, including our HR and student affairs pages. What's been a source of pride and comfort for me personally is the compassion and care I've seen you show one another on our campus. And I want to thank you all for that. Now, I must say it's hard to transition back to business as usual after starting with something as wrenching in this, as this. I know many of you find it hard to focus. I do too, and so I want to acknowledge that. Again, what's important to me is that we are a community. So that's where I want to focus today, who we are. I've been at TC for more than 30 years, and like many of you, this feels like home. It is home. I live here with many students and faculty. And that sense of community comes when so many staff and frankly, and faculty, and frankly, some of our students remain often for decades. In fact, 244 full-time staff, not including faculty, have been with the college for more than 10 years. 80 of you have been here for more than 20 years. This is an amazing testament to Teachers College itself. And that's not to give short shrift to the new staff who joined us, joined us more recently. In fact, in the years since our last State of the College address, 98 full-time staff have joined TC. We also have a record 22 new faculty lecturers and professors of practice join us this semester. That says quite a lot about TC as well. You choose to come here and you all bring new vitality, strengths to our already strong institution. In fact, this past April, TC tied for the number one best graduate school of education in the US News and World Report rankings. This is something to celebrate, yes. <laughs> Now, I want to take note of two leadership changes over the last year. Of course, you know our new provost, Carrie Ann O'Meara, who joined us in July. Yes. <laughs> so happy to have her. And I also want to acknowledge Tamara Britt, who has been... <clears throat> Tamara came with many skills, but she's now taken on two jobs. She's now the, our general counsel, over, and she's overseeing our institutional advancement team since July. Now, tomorrow I'm sure is very happy with the next thing I'm going to say, which is that we've now launched a search for a new vice president for our, inter, our inter, institutional advancement team, and we hope to have that position filled 
by the spring. So that's, that's really, let's hope for that. So. All right. I want to turn now to some updates on our five strategic priorities. These are priorities I first envisioned when I became president in 2018. They are about building TC's exceptional foundation and history and continuing the work to chart our future course. They are about designing instruction, research, and practice that places us at the forefront of the fields of education, health, and psychology. They are about fostering and supporting a diverse and inclusive community for all of us. And they are about strengthening our research and securing our place at the vanguard of developing technologies. We draw on all parts of the college with every cabinet member, all of our faculty and staff leading the way. I will report on just a few of our accomplishments with these priorities. For a more complete picture of our progress, we have updated our website and will send around a link in a follow-up email. Now, the first priority is building the optimal academic organization, creating a strong foundation for an enriched faculty and student experience that ensures program excellence and public impact. A foundational effort here was to clarify our common purpose this culminated in June when the board approved a new mission statement, which I hope everybody will memorize now. I, I've memorized it, but I'm going to read it this time, just to make sure. <laughs> to empower committed learners and leaders to build a smarter, healthier, more just, and equitable world through multidisciplinary knowledge creation, policy engagement, and practice innovations across education, psychology, and health. It's around here somewhere. <laughs> As you know, we have been rolling out this new mission and a refreshed brand identity that will play a key role in, our, in how we collectively tell our story and extend our impact as part of the TC swag that's now available uh, with our new, with our new uh, branding and logo. So everybody should uh, take advantage of that. So I'm grateful to our entire community for participating in this effort. Now, we've done some other things, many other things to uh, adjust our academic programs. We've reduced the credit requirements for EDDs from 90 to 75. This aligns with peer institutions, keeps TC competitive, and also, perhaps most important, saves our students money. And we've begun developing five new online programs in our efforts to be more accessible, align with the needs of working professionals, meet market demands, and reflect our digital innovation. Now, our second priority is institutionalized diversity, equity, and inclusion. Here, our goal is to develop and cultivate a diverse community where everyone is supported as they meet their potential and also help us to lead the fight against systemic racism and advance social justice. We have now published our second annual DEI report, which you can find on our website, with a specific focus on inclusion. So this report describes how we have strengthened the experience for TC's lecturers, launched our, our Accessibility First campaign, engaged staff voices in our hybrid and flexible work policies and faculty voices through our climate survey, and built out inclusive programs to meet the needs of our diverse and worldwide community of alumni. We also reflect on our 2023 diversity data, which is beginning to show the impact of our refined hiring practices. I'd like to add that as of this fall, our 22 new faculty and lecturers are 60% people of color. And finally, of course, our commitment to DEI includes our response to the June 2023 Supreme Court ruling on, aff on affirmative action in college admissions. As you all know, that decision rolled back decades of legal and societal progress and best practices that aimed to correct systemic injustices while ensuring equity in the admissions process. We are bound by law to conform to the court's decision, but we are equally bound by our mission and values of an equitable and just society. You received an email a few weeks ago with an update on our Affirmative Action Working Group, which has broad representation from across the college, focused on our compliance. 
We will continue to update you as we make changes to comply with the law, even as we also seek to reaffirm our core values. Our third priority is improving student pathways, and I couldn't be prouder of our success here. In July, we launched our new Division of Enrollment and Student Success, which brought together student affairs and enrollment management. This centralizes operations and gives full view and focus on the entire student journey in support of their success. We're working to improve and increase our financial aid program. Our, one example is our Teachers Future Award, which provided financial support for those enrolled in teacher certification programs. This was launched as a pilot model to address the nationwide teacher shortage, and it's working. Our current teacher certification programs collectively saw a 27 spike in enrollment as a result of this pilot. I don't, so that's a good thing to support. <clears throat> After all, we are teachers' college, right? So, Our fourth priority is to increase our research funding for the college. Here, we wanted to offer more opportunities and financial support for our students and boost the impact of our faculty research on policy and practice. And we have significantly strengthened and streamlined our research support and increased our funding from sources including the NIH, NSF, the Spencer Foundation, and more. And finally, our fifth priority is to develop TC's leadership role in digital innovation. Our goal here is to situate the college at the forefront of pedagogic innovation in technology. We want our faculty to be positioned as visionaries in this space. Over the last year, through our Digital Futures Institute, we increased access to artificial intelligence tools for faculty and K-12 teachers. We launched a new video series featuring our own faculty and students on how they're successfully using these tools in their courses, research, and more. So that's an update on just a few of our accomplishments within our five priorities. Let me take a moment now to thank all of you, our staff and faculty who have moved this agenda forward from every part of the college. We have gotten a lot done. So let's say that. <clears throat> Now, of course, it goes without saying that we need students for all of these efforts to be meaningful. And this fall, we welcomed more than 1,600 new students and almost 4,500 4, students overall from 47 states, plus Puerto Rico and the Division of District of Columbia across the U.S., and more than 70 countries. Our enroll, our, well, let's, let's give a thing for that. <laughs> That's definitely TC. Our enrollment projections for the full year look good, and we are increasingly more diverse with sizable increases over the last decade in the percentage of domestic students identifying as Asian, Hispanic, and black, particularly at the master's level. Now, yes, let's applaud that one, too. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to share two updates about our philanthropy. In the fall of 20, 2021, our Board of Trustees launched the Trustees Scholars of Tomorrow as a fundraising initiative to help TC become more financially accessible to all. I'm proud to say we completed this effort in 2023, surpassing our $10 million goal. Now, and many of you know, yes, that's one of, who's gonna? <laughs> after, in the State of the Union, they applause after every, after every passage or so. <laughs> All right, Dr. Lambros, now many of you know Dr. Lambros Comitas, actually Lambros hired me when I came to Teachers College, and he passed away in March 2020. In his memory, we are establishing the Lambros Comitas Chair in Applied Anthropology. This was made possible through a bequest of more than $3 million by Professor Comitas, a gift that is among the largest for a professorship in TC history. He had a transformational impact on Teachers College, and this gift, gift helps to carry on his important legacy. <laughs> Finally, I want to make note of some recent alumni events. Last month, we had our first in-person alumni weekend in three years. About 250 alumni came to the campus for TC Reunites, a fantastic weekend that included faculty presentations, games, and dance. 
and we had another 700 online viewers from programming offered throughout the week. And Tamar Britt and I are just back from Asia, where we met with very enthusiastic alumni in Seoul, Tokyo, and Hong Kong. Their experiences at TC were very positive, and the college is a continued source of pride for them. And they are a continued source of pride for us. It was wonderful to talk with them. Okay, now I've been thinking a lot. All right. Now I've been thinking a lot as I have begun my second term as president about what's ahead for the college and how significantly the landscape has changed over the last five years. For instance, we are now, we have a new appreciation for remote work and new ways of teaching. We are facing the reality of mental health issues affecting our students and community, the racial reckoning that began with the murder of George Floyd in 2020, the recent affirmative action decision, controversies even about teaching history and library books. There's the alarming state of global warming and the implications of changes in immigration and federal financial aid policies. And as noted, the situation in Israel, Israel and Gaza, plus the ongoing war in Ukraine. The world feels unstable. But there are also opportunities. There's the great potential of using new technologies in our classrooms, even as an intervention to address rising rates of depression. We also have new ways to enter the discourse on the teaching of history and how schools might be reimagined. There are new approaches to conflict resolution, addressing gun violence and literacy. In this greater context, I've been focused on two broad questions. First, what more can we do to strengthen our ability to address these global challenges through our teaching, research, and partnerships with practitioners? And second, what do we do as an institution to make sure that we continue to thrive in these changing and challenging times? We have to prepare TC for a future that will continue to evolve in unexpected ways. And so I'm moving forward this year with three key initiatives. First, what I call TC's Public Good Initiative. Last year, after discussions in faculty and other meetings, we chose several substantive areas of focus with a particular impact, emphasis on impact. We have four themes, all led by members of our faculty. One is teacher education, including a special emphasis on literacy, mental health and wellness, sustainability and climate change, and digital innovation with a particular emphasis on the implications of artificial intelligence. Now, TC is already doing a great deal in these areas. Our first task is to publicize, both internally and externally, the progress and contributions that we are already making. Our team is writing briefing papers on each of these thematic areas, and we are developing several initiatives to promote and raise visibility of our work. We hope this will spur additional thinking and engage new partners. So stay tuned for that. A second initiative involves our continued work towards building the optimal academic organization. We are conducting a year-long analysis of our academic programs to determine our best design for the future. We have begun planning with department chairs and faculty, reviewing the content, size, and direction of their programs, including course and program modality. We are taking into account our enrollments, market demand, trends in financial aid, faculty and academic staffing, and other factors. Our goal here is to increase enrollment and, and of course maintain and increase our program excellence and relevance. The third initiative is our series of community-wide dialogues in which some of you have already participated. This is led by Carrie Ann. This initiative will define our commitments to our students, to our fields, to our schools and communities, and to each other in the context of our mission. The other initiative I've mentioned are about what we do. This is about who we are, how we will live our mission and our values. So, five priorities that we will continue to work on and three initiatives this year that will set us up for impact beyond our campus and for us to continue to thrive. All of these efforts work together as all of you work together. It's an ambitious agenda that will set up Teachers College for the next 10 years and beyond. This is what we need to do. Now, why now? Well, first of all, we are needed. 
These are the very societal issues that we are prepared to address. Our history has led us here. Our future demands our collective response. Secondly, we are operating from a position of strength. We have the strongest and most effective cabinet since I've been president. We also have a broad range of faculty, staff, and students who bring a variety of complementary and outstanding skills. Across the college, from staff to faculty to our trustees, I'm confident we have the team to do this work and to do it well. So I end here, as I started, with a focus on our community. The horizons ahead of us are expansive. The ground below us is constantly shifting. It will take each of us working together to determine who we are in this moment and who we want to be. What will be our contribution to the continued legacy of Teachers College for future generations? I ask you to join me in meeting this moment. I ask you to join me in building our future. And I am excited to, excited to move forward with all of you. Thank you. Thank you.